It may seem counterintuitive based on my background, but I have the absolute hardest time putting myself, like, to go do something. And it's hard to reconcile with my background because, like, there's no way to get to where I am without putting your mind on something for, like, a long period of time. Like, college, I don't think was, you know, that difficult, but you go to medical school and residency, and it's like, with med school, if you're not studying at least 12 hours a day, with some breaks in there here and there, sure, but uh, you're, you're going to fall behind. And then residency, you're working, they call it 80 hours a week, but sometimes it's less, sure, but it's often more and how do you possibly do that if you don't have like i don't know focus direction and i was i've been thinking about it for the last like i don't know three months when i well, maybe two months when i started thinking about actually putting more content out there try to you know develop this into something that's kind of resembles just I don't want to say like a career, but more than a hobby, let's say, because I, you know, they see my, you know, Instagram follower count well north of hundred K and they're like, Oh, you must make a ton of money on social media. It's like, no, um, I, I, I don't make Jack on social media. <laughs> like this YouTube channel, um, pays me like 45 bucks a month. And I know YouTube's not my strongest, but still it, it's yeah you I, you can't live on the social media that i have currently and and it's been like a, a hobby and it's been kind of coasty for the last i don't know six years since i started it really and it was only until like two months ago where i you know i, I decided with the the help and <laughs> <laughs> kind yellings at from my wife that, you know, maybe I just need to do more. And I know I could do more, but my brain just kind of like goes off on tangents all the time. And, and I'm hoping that this video is not one of those tangents. I guess it's only one of these tangents if I don't do anything with it. But I was thinking like, why is it that I am where I am now as far as my medical career? And just, I, I just can't sit down to focus on something. And I think that part of it is the, the terror associated with, you know, medical education in that there's always something looming, even if it's six or eight weeks away. Right. And it's the, the, the massive, massive, massive amounts of, of, content that you have to consume and then be not only be able to regurgitate, but also be able to synthesize and that synthesizing that information is the hard part, right? People can just like quote off all, all sorts of guidelines and, 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 you know, book passages, but that doesn't make them a good doctor. What makes them a good doctor is the, the more global understanding. And you can't have that until you know, <laughs> the stuff that's in the books. So you have to know all that stuff first, then you have to perseverate on it, then you have to be exposed to th times and places where it's very useful, kind of useful, not useful, and then you develop that global understanding. And to have to do that for an entire system of the human body in eight weeks in the first year or two of medical school is terrifying because there's just so much, you know, you can, you can spend dozens and dozens of lifetimes studying medicine and still not even come close to the whole thing. And to, to, to make something north of a 70% on any given exam, when you think about it like that is really a tall task. Uh, 70% is if you got below a 70% or below two standard deviations below the mean uh, where I went to school, that was considered a failure, whichever one, whichever one of those is lower, right? So there was one, one block that was like the Hemonk block. Um, it was right before we had to take our first 
board exam in medical school, which is terrifying by itself. It's changed a little bit since then, but still terrifying. The the guy that ran that block of, of, of study for us in school knew that we were also studying for this board exam called step one kind of on the side. So what he would do is review the, the you know, like the, the tome of step one and teach not that stuff and test on not that stuff so that we'd have to, I don't know, uh, learn more, I guess. And of course, he's a researcher and most of the, the, the uh, first year or two, like the classroom stuff in med school is taught by PhDs and not uh, physicians because you get to the physicians, you know, in the actual hospital and clinics and stuff. So he would go around it and do that and made it more terrifying. That, I think the lowest passing grade for that particular exam was like a 65 because it was, people are studying for step one, right? There are some things that we learned at the very beginning of medical school, a year and a half before in cellular metabolism, just going over the Krebs cycle a thousand times that we hadn't seen in a year and a half. And now we have to review it so we get the question right on the test. So that amount of terror and just trying to understand all that stuff really, I think, helped push me because it was just like that sense of impending doom. In residency, it's the you have all of these patients to see, you have all of these things to get done, you have all of these decisions you have to make, and oh, by the way, you don't actually get a lunch break, you go to lecture and uh, have lunch, and often the you know lecture will include you responding to pages and doing whatever it is you have to do with your you know, your team. Uh, and then, you know, you get to, you get to sign out at a certain time. And what if your stuff's not done? Will you go home later? And if you go home later, then that kind of sucks. Um, so there was always something just like staring me dead in the eyes. And now that I'm on the other side as an attending, it's less, especially the stuff that like I really enjoy, which is the lifestyle stuff. And you know, how many people have I like, taken off of pills and how many pills have been removed from my patients over the course of the last couple of years. It's been a lot. And that's the stuff that I, I like, but there's no, there's no longer a sense of impending doom. So when I sit down to like put something together, it just becomes this, it's not even like, I don't even know. It, it feels, it feels like my brain is like cramped and I don't want to do it. And then I see people who I think are, it's going to sound really mean and I don't really mean to, to sound really mean, but I think these people are dumber than I am and they're doing way more. And then I think to myself, well, they're obviously not dumber than I am because they have, they, they're, they're doing more. They are, you know, they have, let's say they have less education, they have less understanding and they're making more money. And that just annoys me more than anything. And it's not all about the money, but if I'm going to spend time doing stuff and researching everything like continuously and having over a decade of experience doing what I'm doing, um, not to mention a medical degree and a residency training and board certification and all that stuff. then like why it just makes me upset that I'm still kind of where I am, but that being upset about it doesn't fix anything. And the being upset about it isn't scary enough to have me like do something about it, I guess. Yeah, that's a lot of talking. <sighs> it's kind of, it's kind of disappointing. You know, it doesn't matter like how much caffeine I throw in me. Uh, you know, I don't get jittery, but you know, theoretically it helps you with kind of focusing, but I don't know. I mean, since my leg's been hosed, I have not been able to go lift as heavy as I'd like to. And my routine is off, which is part of the problem, but <sighs> I don't know. This isn't caffeine, by the way. Um, I drink a lot of sparkling water. <laughs> That's uh, sparkling water. Flavored sparkling water, because I, I can. <sighs> but I've had some success in the past with focusing and having like this, 
I don't know. It's it's all it's not like EDM like trance. It's just background rhythm noise. I don't even know what it's called, but uh, something that I enjoy and I have been seeing people with these little puck looking things. Puck because of hockey, but it's just a timer, right? And I can set a timer, and I think I'm going to try to do that because um, it's been nothing but annoying having to. I don't know. just bring myself to sit down and do the work because I, I, and it's not like a pity thing. It's, it's a, like, am I, am I actually that pathetic? Right? Because it's been a, it's been just this perpetual cycle of not improving my situation for, for, for years really. And sure. Yeah. You, like I don't even view the whole education and medical training thing as improving my situation, even though it, even though it is. But for for forever, it's just been oh, you're just kind of expected to do that, and that's just gonna that's just what you're expected to do. Which I understand, like cerebrally, my forebrain understands that n almost nobody gets the the opportunities that I've had. Almost nobody understands the things that I understand. Almost nobody has you know the 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 brain capacity that I have and, and I'm, and my forebrain understands that I am grateful for that, but there's something deeper in there that that thinks what the hell are you doing? Right. And, and like, it bothers me and I, I kind of apologize for using you as a, a therapy session. Um, but part of this, part of the reason for recording this is to make sure that people understand that everybody has that. Right. And, and a lot of people that I talk to that I reach on my, on my platforms has or have something getting in the way of, you know, being healthier, being better into fitness. And, and we all have that at some level, right? That's why the, that's why the elite, you know, bodybuilders, they still hire coaches, right? And I've not hired a, a, a bodybuilding coach, right? I, I know what I need to do to get better. And for the last kind of, for the last two or three weeks, I have actually been actively engaging in that. But prior to that, for like four or five years, it was kind of just a hobby, much like the social media stuff was. I can't shake the feeling that I am not doing nearly enough, partly, partly, partially because I know that I'm not doing nearly enough because I just sit there and like dick around all day, which is like fine if to take breaks, but you know, that's the, that's supposed to be the exception and not the rule. And I need to figure out a way to appropriately switch that. So I'm gonna, I guess, try this timer thing for now. And, you know, hopefully the mood gets a little bit better, but and that's the other thing with, with the, this channel, I feel like, like I, there's so much that I want to teach people and I always wanted to have these like super polished videos that, you know, make it look pretty and all that good stuff. But Like, frankly, who cares, right? This, as of this recording, I have like 60 something hundred YouTube subscribers and the the subscribers and the people that watch my stuff routinely, um, who engage it, who enjoy it, who uh, find value out of it is, is why I continue to do it and is why I restarted doing it. And a lot of it is that, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here that I want to share with people to largely just help them like any doctor wants. Right. And hopefully being able to kind of get this out there will, will help people understand that yes, like this is a thing that happens to people at people for people, whatever it is. And it doesn't matter how 
good you think someone has it as far as work ethic or education or whatever it is, it's still a thing. So, I mean, I guess, you know, props to Sam Selleck for, you know, doing the real stuff. Um, for those of you who don't know, he's a, a 21, 22 year old bodybuilder. He's on um, all sorts of gear. That being said, it doesn't do the work for you and it doesn't have the understand it doesn't give you the understanding of how all this stuff works, which he works extremely hard at his craft. And he knows much more than most people full stop, and most people give him credit for. But his style of video is like you're hanging out with a buddy and that's you know, not always happy and joyful, but it's, you know, kind of background noise. And I feel like <laughs> that's um, a better style for me because I, I don't want to, I don't want to be a caricature, I suppose. And, you know, when I, when I interact with patients, it's, you know, you, you play the room a little bit and for a while, it's just been, I'm still playing the room even though the room is my camera. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you can easily understand how my brain gets turned into a pretzel by that, uh, God knows how many minutes of non-sensory. But the good news is I have, um, Actually, Kyrie made this for me to start. Um, this, these were the goals for November, and I got to track everything. And then I made myself a little bit of the goals for November, only I made it look prettier with a little pseudo calendar thing, uh, because I tried bullet journaling, and that was a terrible waste of time. It took me like five hours to make the bullet journal, and I never used it. But this is something that's simpler. And not to poo-poo on, bullet journaling. A lot of people do really well with it. Um, all the, you know, books and notebooks that I've bought that I would think were really cool to use and I still do, but um, I have a mini legal pad over here that I've been using. And uh, yeah, hopefully at some time I'll be able to, I don't want to just like, I don't want to think that the work is going to be like my favorite thing in the world but I want to get to the point where I find <sighs> let's take like, let's take YouTube, for example, right? If I hit some like milestone on YouTube, whatever that might be, it will probably suggest that I do more, right? It'll probably give me that dopamine hit to say, Hey, this is working. You're doing something right. Let's do more stuff. Cool. And I'm not gonna get there if I just half-ass it, right? But it's like, you need you need the skills from the pills, but you need the pills to get the skills. And it's, the, it's that initial grind that I still feel like I'm at, like I was in medical school trying to learn everything without the sense of impending doom. So I'll use the timer to say, hey, you just have to sit down for like 30 minutes. Could you, could you like, figure out how to do 30 minutes of, of productive things over the course of your Saturday, for the love of God. And you don't have to be married to the work either. Like I know my parents are coming over uh, for dinner and Kyrie works at night. And my, you know, my parents and I, as Kyrie goes to work, we'll probably watch the you know first period of the Bruins game or something before they go home. And I'll, you know, have more stuff to do. Um, Yeah, let's let's uh, let's well, let's see how this goes. I mean, I guess I guess I could you know think that you know if I don't do this, then you know we go broke and we sell our new house and we live in a crappier situation and then I can't afford my medicine and all this stuff, which is you know I have to I have to think that way. I think, and it's going to take some time for that conditioning to pull through. I'm not sure how else I can go about that because it's really, the, it's the terror that 
drove me before. And it's been, I haven't had that sense of doom for years. And I would like to have that sense of doom back. That's the weirdest sentence I've ever heard in my life. My timer just went off. Um, I've been spending the last, well, I've spent the last half an hour working on an Instagram post for today. And it's just a, frankly, it's just a conglomeration of like the different steps I've taken because uh, today was kind of a big step going forward as far as like little victories. Um, I've just been working on it for half an hour. My music was in the background um, and I've been just doing it. This is an easy task, I think, because I kind of knew what I was going to do anyway. I just had to go and execute it. Um, but I'm still, but I'm like not done and uh, I still feel good. This is weird. Yeah, I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back to it. That was my third cycle of this. So like an hour and a half of like really focused work. And I'll be honest, the first two times I did it, it was, I kind of went overboard a little bit. Um, it's not that I, you know, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes right, right through. Cause then why didn't I just set a timer for 90 minutes? Um, I managed to take a couple breaks. You know, I had lunch, took a shower, um, let some of these psychopath dogs out. And uh, I've been working on this um, ebook for the last uh, two two rounds, and I've managed to make a uh, visual that I'm really bad at because I'm not a graphic designer. Uh, and I've also written 1,500 words. Writ 1,500. God Almighty, I've written 1,500 words, <laughs> um, and it's not done. And my folks will be here in about 45 minutes. Kiri will wake up in about 45 minutes. Um, so I'll have to help her with that stuff, but, uh, I mean, it feels kind of good to make this big of a dent and stuff. I'm kind of starting to get tired because <laughs> it's been a lot of, it's not like a, f a final draft by any search of the imagination. Marsha brought me a cheeseburger. It's not a final draft by any stretch of the imagination, but it feels nice to get all that stuff like on for lack of a better term, paper, like on the computer and doing stuff with it. You, if you're gonna hand me the cheeseburger, hand me the cheeseburger. You're just gonna stand there and wag your tail at me. Okay, fine. Uh, that being said, I am getting tired. It's quarter to three. I'm not gonna have any more caffeine. In fact, I came up with this epiphany that I'll probably rue her at um, terribly, but I think I'm gonna spend all of next week, I guess starting tomorrow, Sunday to Saturday, with no caffeine. What? Jesus. I think that's, I think it's probably a good idea. Um, it's been a while since I did a real caffeine fast and I've had like maybe 200 milligrams, which is really not that much um, today, which is probably why I'm a little bit slow. But I don't think it's that much, um, especially for me, who's been, who's used to more. Um, my kind of sweet spot for exercise pre-workout is in the neighborhood of 400 milligrams. So like double that just before workout. Uh, there's a lot of science that goes into that. And God, what? And uh, it, it, I know it's to most people who don't know how much caffeine to take or how much caffeine is in stuff. That sounds insane. But there's a lot of really good studies on the appropriate amount of caffeine for um, for strength training people before strength training. <sighs> yeah, I feel happy with the, the amount of work I got done right now. Um, I will probably feel less happy about it in like two or three hours because my head just wants to be like, well, why can't I just do it, right? <coughs> Bless you, somebody. 
but my I, I feel like I should just like manifest it into creation except stuff takes work and work is not fun typically she's gonna shove that in my armpit and then you run away you're like you're the worst little sister ever you just steal the ball and then run away so nobody can play except you're really slow not a slow runner but just you know you should, no, you okay. Yeah, go away. Um, yeah, it's uh, at least I mean at least this work is is fun. I guess kind of it's trying to get my knowledge from about like dieting for this one and just get it on the page right. And it's not a full diet list a comprehensive thing because I think making those sorts of plans for people is less helpful long term than equipping these people with I guess the knowledge and the skills to kind of understand why they're doing what they're doing and why I'm telling them to do one thing or another and I think that's you know I you know, I, I, I'm I'm not I'm not giving a man a fish. I'm teaching everybody how to fish, which sounds delicious right now. Um, yeah, that's a day of rambling, I guess. Oh, Bergie's here. Help me, buddy. Hi, hey, buddy. This is the wolfhound. Yeah, they're big. What? Do you have to go pee? Or do you just want to get your ear scratched? Okay. Okay, buddy. All right. All right, buddy. Are we done here? Okay. What? 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 Oh. Oh, shut up. All right, we're done here. The rats are growling at each other. The big guys, one wants to get pet, the other wants to sleep. If you have a choice between, you know, what kind of dogs to get, get big ones.